Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone and thank you for joining us today in this uh, what I think is going to be a very exciting webinar. My name is Olivier Charon, I'm the CEO and founder at Tremolo Software. You may not know Tremolo Software but you may have known Pure Channel Apps and we recently rebranded. Um, but uh, without further ado, today we're talking about partner portals, we're talking about uh, our own solution, Portal On Demand and um, let me introduce you the speakers uh, today. Um, as I said, I am Olivier Chon, the CEO and founder uh, Pierre Chan Labs, Tremolo Software. We should have updated the slide, but I'm really delighted and excited to have with us Claire Lethem from ZSL. Uh, we've worked with Claire for um, over a year today, and um, Claire, would you like to say a bit more about yourself? Yes, hello everybody. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, so yes, as Olivier said, I am Claire Leatham. Uh, I have been with Zizel just over a year now. I'm the Partner Program Manager for EMEA. Um, previous to that, I've had similar roles uh, across many different vendors, uh, distributors and, um, and managed partners uh, in the IT industry over the last 12 years. Uh, obviously ending up in, in marketing, a marketing route, and now looking after the Partner Program for Zizel. Thank you very much, Claire. Um, a bit more about Tremolo Software before we start, and then I'll like also explain the format of the session today. Uh, Tremolo Software, we are a UK headquartered uh, software business. Um, we are focusing on driving brand engagement for our customers, um, and that's through a number of our platforms. Today we'll focus about the one that's in the middle, uh, Portal On Demand, but you may know us from Social On Demand, our social syndication platform, and News On Demand, our truly revolutionary uh, news platform, typically for channel partners and employees. Uh, today we're going to talk about Portal On Demand, but uh, just to put it in perspective, uh, we offer a number of tools which our customers use, um, and those tools um, don't always reflect or work as a full portal. You'll see a lot of functionality today that Claire is going to, to show and demo. Uh, some of that functionality can be taken as, if you like, modules for maybe, or maybe to complement your existing partner portal or maybe to complement your existing social demand you know, deployment you have with us. So it's very important. Um, we do quite a lot, uh, whether it's about news, whether it's about resources, whether it's events that you can essentially take as, as its own. So that's the first point I wanted to make. The second thing I'm going to say is you do have the option to download handouts. Um, it's on your screen. Uh, so we have a couple of assets, including the Zycel case study that you can download. But very important, keep your questions um, coming. We will make sure we have time at the end of the session to go through hopefully all of the questions you're going to put through, okay? Uh, now, without further ado, Claire, I'm going to sit down and enjoy and let you drive this webinar. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Olivier. Uh, okay, so uh, just on screen now, I'm not going to read through everything, uh, but it's just a little bit about Zizel, if you've not heard of Zizel. Uh, Zizel is a uh, networking vendor. Uh, been around for nearly 30 years, um, uh, originated our HQ was in Taiwan uh, and we moved into Europe about 10 years ago. We have, uh, in, in EU, we have 14 different branches in different countries uh, across EU and I have launched the uh, partner portal to all of those and um, we're just rolling out a new partner program uh, and we're doing it kind of a few regions at a time. So we've rolled out in most regions now. Uh, we're just waiting for two more final regions to launch on January 1 uh, and then everywhere will be on the same partner program. Okay, so uh, I'll talk to you today a bit about the portal, about our challenges. Uh, so when I came on board in August 2016, uh, we had a... Um, a quite archaic uh, portal, uh, if you will. It was quite difficult to manage. Uh, it, it wasn't great. Um, it was so time consuming to upload anything, to update anything on there. It was very static. Uh, the functionality wasn't very good for the partners. Uh, and obviously, as a result of that, uh, partners maybe checked out the portal once and then there was nothing really to keep them coming back. Nothing really changed uh, from day to day and week to week. So we wanted something really dynamic and fresh with the uh, new portal. 
Uh, so this was just uh, kind of the look and feel of our old portal. Uh, we also, uh, last September, as a company, went through a whole rebranding exercise uh, to bring Zizol into the 21st century. Um, so that fitted quite nicely with the launch of our new portal as well. Uh, so some key dates, as I mentioned, we initially launched the portal in October 2016 uh, in five of our main regions in Europe, but we stayed with the old partner program. It was just a, a fresh face in the website, but we didn't actually change our partner program at that point. Uh, we had uh, full integration with the corporate awards, um, so that's... Um, uh, rewards fulfillment company so in our old partner program we had basically a points make prizes kind of system where from selling Zizel products partners earned points and then they could spend them on kettles toasters whatever they wanted so they portal has integration with that platform as well as well as our um, we had uh, integration with our uh, old CRM which was SLX and um, what, so we launched our new uh, partner program, so that's called ZAP, uh, the Zizel Ally program. So we relaunched the program in the UK and Ireland in April. Uh, we added in uh, Turkey and Russia uh, in October 2017, but they do have different partner programs. They're the final two that we're bringing into the EU partner program. Uh, so they are currently running different programs. So obviously their partners see different programs when they log in, uh, which is all dynamic. And then we launched in CEE, DAC and Iberia in October, uh, just gone. And then the final two regions will be Nordics and Benelux in January 2018. Um, and yes, uh, missed out the, we have now two-way integration with Dynamics, which is our new CRM uh, that launched this year. Okay, so again, I'm not going to read all, all this out, um, but we've uh, basically, we've got a lot of stuff on the portal, so anything that our uh, teams create locally, any localized assets, case studies, sales cheat sheets, anything um, that they do, they upload to the portal. Uh, we've had uh, quite a lot of downloads, I think that's on a different slide, but we've had a lot of downloads since we went live. Uh, we handle different tiers, so in, in ZAP, in the Zizel Ally program, there are three tiers, Ally, Silver and Gold, and there are different requirements and benefits to each level in the partner program. So um, obviously partners um, will see what level they are, they can download their certificates and things dependent on what tier they are. We also handle four currencies, uh, uh, the Euro, uh, GBP, US dollars and the Russian ruble. Um, and we support not only uh, VARs, so VARs, uh, value added resellers are in our partner program, but we also give access to the portal to distributors, e-tailers, retailers and DMRs. So those guys can't see the partner program requirements and benefits because they're not part of it. They can just see all the great stuff that's in the portal, the resources, teams, the price list, uh, anything they need to see they can have access to there. Uh, we have um, over 50 pages on the portal. It's kind of um, grown massively since we launched uh, last October, and we currently have it in nine different languages. Okay, um, so just a bit about the uh, system generated emails. So all of the uh, reset password, uh, all of those kinds of emails, uh, when you've submitted a special bid, all of those system emails are programmed in in all different languages. That's all automated. Uh, and obviously you can see uh, a, an activity log against each account within their account to see what they've received and when. Um, we've um, much to uh, Pure, Pure Channel's delight, sorry, Tremolo's delight, we've sent 136 additional ad hoc emails. So that might be when we've launched new training dates or about the new launch of the new partner program in different regions. And we've generated uh, 8,500 unique clicks from those. We've had some great open rates and click to open rates uh, as well, as you can see. Um, yeah, we've done, uh, we sent quite a few emails. And yeah, uh, over 115,000 uh, page visits since launch uh, and 20,000 asset downloads. Uh, I was actually quite surprised myself when I saw that stat, uh, 20,000 asset downloads. So there must be something, must be something worth downloading on the portal. Okay, so I'm going to cover today a bit about the portal. Uh, I'm going to show you some of my favorite bits of the portal. Um, and then we'll do a live demo 
Uh, hopefully that will work. I'm currently in a hotel room with uh, semi uh, dodgy Wi-Fi, so hopefully that will be um, be fine. And then I'll talk a bit about how we work with Tremolo uh, and then a bit about the future as well. Uh, and as Olivier said, if you've got any questions, if you can type them in the chat window as you go along and then we'll make sure we answer them at the end or if you just save them to the end, that's fine. Okay, so the portal. Uh, here's just some screenshots, of course you'll see it in real life in a moment. Uh, but we have, uh, we have a smart registration process. Uh, so depending on what country you're in, for example, uh, it will then default your language settings to you and all the bits in the back end that you should see. Um, because we have um, news articles in the portal and obviously if you're in Russia and uh, a promo is not available to you, you don't want to be seeing that. Uh, so we have this registration process and then all of the new registrations go through to the sales account managers to approve within region and then when they get approved they get set up as an account in our CRM overnight. We've got all the uh, expected bits in there, so news, uh, promotions, events, um, loads of assets on there. Uh, we've got a resource library full of stuff, um, and we show uh, personalized details about their account, their discount levels, uh, and their zap levels on the home page. And then they have a specific page where they can see their progress against uh, the partner program and what it takes for them to get to the next level. We have custom price lists, uh, so obviously people in different countries are working from different price lists and uh, different currencies, uh, so again all of that is dynamic and they get uploaded centrally once a month. And then we have, uh, we have program champions, which is something where <clears throat> at each company there is a program champion. Usually it's the first person to sign up on the portal, uh, but it can be changed at any time and it should be the person responsible for uh, overseeing the Zizel business. So they can do extra things um, like they can up upload their company profile information, they can change their details, they can reassign the champion uh, status to somebody else, they can easily refer colleagues to come and join the portal, uh, just send a quick referral uh, to their email address uh, and uh, most importantly to get the discounts associated with the partner program, uh, the partner has to select which distributor they wish to get the discounts from and it's only program champions that have the level of access to do that. Okay, these are just some more screenshots. Uh, so obviously, depending on where you're signing in from, what country you're signing in from, you will see a different uh, Zizer local team. You also see the European team at European level, and then all of the Zizer authorized distributors in your region. And then a new area uh, in the portal, uh, very new, we only launched this uh, last month, is the training tracker. So any employee um, of the, uh, any of the partners in the partner program, any employee that attends a webinar or an on-site training session or a ZT&E training, technical workshop, anything that we hold, we will then uh, upload a list of attendees and when they attended into the portal and then it will show in their training track area all of their colleagues um, at their company, what training they've attended and when and then how long that lasts for. So one of the requirements of the part of the program is to complete uh, some Zizel training and then once they've completed it, depending on the training that they've uh, completed, it lasts a different amount of time. So they will see how long they are compliant with their uh, ZAP uh, status for. Um, we also have, um, we can have assets and things tailored by partner type. So there's a lot of um, cheat sheets and comparison guides and things that we upload uh, for DISTIs only. Uh, so kind of uh, help for the sales teams within DISTIs. Uh, so we can uh, obviously segment that uh, for DISTIs. Uh, likewise, we can segment end user marketing material uh, for our resellers to use uh, and obviously tailor programs to them. So we can restrict any of the content that we need to. We can even have events uh, for gold partners only and, and things like that. Um, so the emails that we send out at the portal, uh, they can be very, uh, very personalized and very targeted. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned, we have program champions. 
and there's certain things that only program champions can do. So if we're talking about the discounts and things, we will only email the program champions because they're the only people who have the authority to make those decisions on behalf of the partner. Um, and yes, we can uh, we can target. Um, sometimes I think uh, Tremolo. Uh, are not very happy when I go to them and say, can we email uh, all people who were born on this date uh, with this information uh, who like football and things like that. But you really can uh, target the data and segment the data. Okay, and then uh, as I said, we have integration with a third party rewards company. So partners can spend their points on there. Uh, we have integration uh, with them. And then uh, something that we have at Zizel being a, a global company is we have different kind of websites managed by different countries available globally. So unfortunately, it's all not all under one single sign-on. Uh, so we just kind of have a signpost page called Quick Links, which signpost partners to wherever they need to go, whether they need support uh, in a technical support forum, uh, the, whether they need to go to the Nebula Cloud Managed Network um, console, uh, whether they need to go to register their licenses. Uh, it's just a signposting page basically to show partners where to go. We really did want the portal to be a one-stop shop. I know everybody says it, uh, but we were really certain that that's what we wanted for all our partners. Okay, so my favorite bits. Um, it's easy to use for partners, it's really easy to use. Uh, once partners sign up, uh, for, then fill out the registration form, they will automatically get a call from the sales team. Uh, we've had, uh, I won't go into exact numbers, but we've had thousands of partners uh, that have registered since we launched just over a year ago. Um, we've had um, more partners than that, in fact, select their distributors because we had uh, around 12,000 partners in our partner program before we launched the new portal. So they migrated into uh, the new partner program and then they had to go and select their preferred distributors to get the discounts. So we've had a lot of success with that. Uh, we've done uh, email campaigns and things to get them to do that as well as obviously calls out from the sales team. Um, it's really easy, as I said, um, to be really targeted. Uh, when I first started working with Tremolo, uh, I kind of wondered if it was a bit overkill, uh, all these segments that you could have and um, tailoring things. But as, as I've kind of worked with them more, I've kind of said, oh, I wonder if we can do that. And because of the level of segmentation that we've got, uh, more than likely we can do that. Uh, we've had hundreds of uh, special bid requests through the portal and not for retail requests. So partners can get a demo discount if they want to demo our kit to their customers uh, and requests like that. Um, historically, have always just gone through the sales team with an email and, and been managed on a spreadsheet, but we've launched a process in the portal which is still uh, in its early days, um, but we've had hundreds of requests come through there already. Uh, and um, I, I actually um, used the service of Tremolo uh, to do a concierge service, so to manage all the queries that come through the portal. Uh, so they've handled the 700 plus queries that have come through to date. And that could be uh, queries about size or products where they would then just put them in touch with our technical guys, or it could be about the portal, about the points, about the program. Uh, it could literally be anything, so they answer those queries. And it's easy for them to order their rewards. So we just upload the points once a quarter, and then partners go away and uh, at this time of year especially, uh, tick off all their Christmas shopping with their Zizel product rewards. Uh, it's really flexible, uh, as I've mentioned a few times actually. Uh, yeah, we can really uh, segment things, so we can create resources, news events, um, really quickly and really easily uh, and only available to certain partners. Uh, obviously, we can um, tailor to certain countries as well or regions, so if it's a webinar, we would generally do regional if it was a language specific webinar, but if it's an event, uh, obviously we would just make it available in that country. Um, we can, it's, it's really surprised me actually, I'm not, um, I, I'm not used to using a content management system myself, um, but it's actually really easy to create pages, edit them, move them, change the navigation. Sometimes it's a bit too easy and I get a bit carried away, um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's all really, really easy to do. And adding new team members and events and news and things is really, really quick and easy to do. 
Uh, we have uh, approval workflows for things. So when partners request special bid pricing, for example, that has to be approved. So we send that to the sales manager within country to approve. Uh, we have the sales uh, account managers approving uh, the new registrations and there's different people in different countries that do that job so we've got uh, all these approval workflows set up to make sure that runs smoothly and we track in the portal the response times to queries and average wait times for approval and things like that. We're actually going to next year we're going to run an internal incentive uh, to get kind of the regions working uh, as a team and against other regions uh, to get some competition going uh, to improve the response times to sales queries and things. And yeah, uh, as I said, if I want to send a specific email to a specific target, it's really, really easy to do that. And um, some of the techie stuff, uh, which I'm not, um, I don't fully understand. Uh, there's a lot of technical calls that happen between my IT guys and Tremolo. Um, but yeah, we have full two-way integration with our CRM now. Um, uh, sorry, lost my way. Uh, but yeah, the content on the page is all uh, personalized and restricted. Um, so you can have one page that looks different for certain users depending on their country, uh, their zap tier, their language. Um, yeah. Um, and we have lots of tracking options as well. So there's loads of reports that I can download from the uh, portal. So if anyone's got any questions on how many visits we've had, uh, what the most popular pages are, what the most unpopular pages are, all of that is really, really easy to do. And as I said, we're supporting different programs at once. So we have uh, a different program in Turkey, a different one in Russia, and then we have the main one that we're rolling out to the rest of Europe. And you will see, but we even have snow falling on the uh, on the portal at the moment for Christmas. And we have the ally characters which are on the website. They're wearing Santa hats and scarves. Okay, so hopefully this will work now. We're going into a live demo. Hopefully people can see my screen now. Okay, so this is the portal. Uh, as you can see, here's my snow falling. Um, and obviously we have uh, the scroller banners linking to uh, anywhere. Uh, you can see what type of partner you are, uh, what partner tier you are, what zap tier you are, and what discount level you've got. Uh, there's, I will click on this, uh, I don't know how long it will take to load, uh, but this is actually a portal guide that we've just done. Um, I say we, Tremolo have just done for us, uh, which basically explains uh, how to do everything on the portal. It's, it's not rocket science, it's a really easy to navigate portal, but we do get quite a lot of queries, uh, so this has helped um, explain to partners and to our internal staff exactly how things work. So partners can download that. Okay, hopefully it won't take too long to load. Okay, um, and then <clears throat> this part is pulling through the latest three uploads of uh, news items in your region. Uh, and obviously, uh, you can change your language. So if you want to see this in Russian or Turkish, you can do. And then again, the latest five resources that have been uploaded pull through onto the home page. So when partners log in, there's always something new to look at. Uh, it pulls through the most recent tweet. Uh, on our um, Zizel UK channel and our uh, five most recent blogs that we've uh, got and uh, oh there are no ev events at the uh, at the moment. It's a shame that but obviously we're coming up to Christmas to the end of the year uh, but normally we would always have uh, events scheduled. And then um, video so if we want to upload a video uh, we can do that and yeah here are the little allies with the Christmas hats and things on. So yeah, uh, obviously you can see from that, that is all dynamically pulled, so I don't need to go away and update the homepage when new things are available, it just pulls through to the homepage and you can see all of that. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, then the, I'll talk about the news section. So obviously the three latest news articles have pulled through onto the homepage, um, but you can go to the news section yourself and you can filter through 
it is loading. Apologies again for my Wi-Fi. Uh, and you can filter by topic. So if you're just interested in switch solutions or cloud solutions, uh, you can filter by that. Promotions, um, Zizel news, anything you're interested in, you can filter through and you can view them all there. And the latest three pull through to the home page. Uh, okay, and then my zap. So this is uh, to do with the partner program. So I'm logged in as a VAR. Uh, so that's why I can see all these areas. We've got an animation here uh, that will play. I won't try and play it uh, and, and mess with the bandwidth, but we have an animation there, which we've done in seven different languages. And then this just explains the partner program and all of the requirements and the benefits uh, to the uh, partner program and then when you go on to uh, my zap benefits uh, this is tailored to the account that you're logged in with so it will show what tier this account is currently so as you can see I'm a gold partner uh, this is where I am and then I can download my company certificate I won't do that because it might take a while um, but it, again that dynamically pulls you can download your partner logos to show that you are a size or gold partner as app goal partner and then you can see all of the uh, requests uh, all of the um, sorry requirements and benefits here um, there's also new areas where partners can uh, request demo products that's the 30% off for not for resale products and they can easily request technical support pre-sales and post-sales callbacks uh, special bids so if uh, a partner has a larger deal uh, over £1,500 they can uh, submit it in here for um, additional uh, protection uh, and protection against the competition so they can deal registration deal regit uh, so they just fill in the end user details select which DISTI they want to uh, purchase it from and then submit it that then goes through to the sales team within region to approve and then they would get a special bid reference back uh, and that would be sent to the DISTI as well and you can see all of your pending requests, your approved requests and your declined requests there and then we've got the meet the team so again uh, this obviously knows that my account is in the UK so it shows me the UK local team and then it shows the uh, European team as well uh, and the DISTIs and then the support, the partner support or contact details on there as well. Uh, the products, so this is where we upload our price list uh, each month uh, and you can split down into all these different categories and then once you go into the categories it then splits it down further but then you will be able to see um, all our products with the manufacturer's part codes and things, what type of product they are, uh, how many tier points they earn you because our partner program works on a tier point basis the more tier points you get the higher up the program you you move uh, so you can see um, which which products um, belong to which category and therefore how many tier points they're worth uh, you can download as an Excel either the whole price list or just a subsection if you're only interested in licenses you can download that there as well and then the resources so this is where we upload um, literally anything uh, so we've got um, cheat sheets battle cards uh, previous emails that we've sent out promotions infographics e-brochures flyers uh, stuff about the partner program news uh, there's there's thousands and thousands of uh, pieces of content in here uh, but obviously you can filter as well to save you going through uh, all the pages you can filter by language uh, by product area uh, or you can just search on a keyword and then training at events, um, I have an awful feeling that there won't be any events, oh, oh there's one, there's a, a webinar that I'm doing actually on the 14th of December uh, for uh, Europe to understand the new partner program, so more details about that there. But yeah, we would generally have, if it wasn't the 6th of December, we would have a lot more training sessions and webinars set up, so they would all be uh, listed here and you can search by month or again you can search by keyword. And then the quick links area. <clears throat> so this is the signposting uh, page basically to all of our other websites so partners can easily find where they need to go uh, for anything else. So our YouTube channels on there, uh, product images if people want high res um, images of our products on their websites and things. We've literally got um, uh, a link to our FTP which has got every picture uh, of every size of product ever known to man. 
and then we've got all our previous recorded webinars so if you've missed a webinar it, they will always be uploaded so you can go and see them obviously blogs um, and this is obviously dynamic as well so in uh, Czech for example or Slovakia we have the Czech Facebook page in there in Germany we have a German YouTube channel uh, so that's all that, uh, that can be tailored by our individual marketing people within country and then there's all the uh, things that you would expect uh, so your profile your company profile um, your training tracker so this is what I was talking about this is the new page um, this is a test account so it won't have any data in uh, but this is where you'd see all of your employees that have completed training what training they have completed uh, when and then the expiry date of that uh, depending on what type of um, what type of training they had to do and then they will also get notifications by email 90 60 and 30 days before the training expires so if they attended a webinar for example that certifies them uh, in the partner program for one year uh, so when it comes to uh, three months before the end of that uh, certification period it will say um, you're at risk of losing your ZAP status, um, you need to attend more training, here are the latest training dates. So that's all uh, pre-configured. Uh, okay, and then your distributors, so I guess this is um, the important part for partners who uh, signed up to the uh, partner program, they have to choose uh, which um, DISTIs they wish to um, get the discounts from. They can select one or, or many of them. Uh, this test account must be set up in Russia because they're the Russian distributors, they're not the UK DCs. Um, yeah, and you can you can change your language in your profile as well if you want to change your language. Obviously you can get in touch, uh, so this is where you raise a, a query and the Tremolo team will uh, get back to you uh, within a matter of minutes um, and you can uh, let us know if you want a call back uh, in one of the different languages as well. Uh, and obviously I won't go through every uh, little bit but you can change your password, uh, you can, uh, the, your colleagues page actually is quite good so this is where you can, um, so I could refer someone so I could uh, fill in some details, first name, last name, email address of one of my colleagues and invite them uh, again, this is a test profile, so I don't have any colleagues, um, but I can refer them. When you do have colleagues on here, it will tell you their name. Uh, well, will it tell you? It will tell you their name. It will tell you when they last logged in, and there'll be a nudge button. So if you can see that one of your colleagues hasn't logged in for the last few months, you can nudge them, and then that will send them an email saying there's loads of great new stuff in the Dizel Partner Portal. You should log in and have a look. Um, and then you can see who is the program champion here as well. So again, it's a test account, so uh, you are the program champion. But if I wasn't the program champion, it would say uh, Joe Bloggs is your program champion. Okay, so I think I have covered most bits on the portal there. Uh, so we'll go back to the slides now. I'm sure Olivier will remind me if I've forgotten anything there. No, no, you're all good, Claire. Do you need a break? Because there's a couple of questions I could answer whilst you need a, you, you uh, take your breath back. Okay, yeah, sure. You okay? Okay, yeah, so I, I, there's uh, quite a few questions there, and I think uh, th there's one I'd like to, to answer because I think it's, uh, uh, it's everybody's concerned. Um, someone is asking, when you migrated your, uh, your, your existing partners from the old partner programs to the new partner program and portal, um, did they have to unroll again? Or was all their data migrated? So um, I, I can I can recall that, and so I'll give you that break, Claire. You can comment afterwards. But uh, initially, all the data was imported into the partner portal, and we were asking partners to essentially reset the password because obviously, from one system to another, we'd lost that password information. Or obviously, is very sensitive. So what we did is we migrated all the data. And we obviously communicated to the partners to tell them about the new partner program, new partner portal. We asked them to reset their password on, on the system. And as they were doing that, we asked them to resign the terms and conditions for the partner program. So that's how it was, it was all done. Um, so I hope that answered the questions. Claire, do you want to add anything to that? No, exactly what you said. Yeah, we just sent them a reset your password, uh, easy as that. And then they logged in and it was a new shiny portal. There we go. Um, I'll give you another break, Claire. Someone's saying, um, 
Salesforce integration. So um, obviously as part of this portal, the integration was with uh, SFX to start with and then we moved to Microsoft Dynamics CRM. Um, and as Claire mentioned, this is a, a two-way integration. So records can be created in both places, which is what typically happens uh, when you have salespeople on a CRM system versus partners that are on a portal. Uh, and whilst Claire and as I said, are not using Salesforce and we're not integrating with Salesforce today, we at Tremolo Software are integrating with Salesforce on a number of deployments. So, um, yeah, of course we do that. I think everybody integrates with Salesforce. So I hope that answered the question. Now, Claire, would you like to carry on on your slide? Yep, yeah, sure. Ready to go. Okay. Was it not moving? Okay. Okay, so I'll just quickly talk about how we work with uh, Tremolo. So I have an amazing account manager uh, at, uh, uh, at Tremolo who is always available on Skype should I need him uh, and we do have weekly calls and sometimes daily calls in fact um, but we, uh, we work, work really well together. Um, I think he uh, likes to come up with new ideas and, and kind of try things out, uh, as do I. I kind of go out into the field um, with my regions and they say they come up with weird and wonderful ideas and then I go back to my account manager and say, oh, surely we can do that, that would be easy. And then they slap me a bill. Uh, but no, they've, they've built some uh, really great things and uh, I've obviously not gone into the back end of the system, but they've done a lot of development on the back end of the system to make it easier for our teams within country to manage themselves so we don't have to go back to them every two minutes for things. We can do things and be self-sufficient uh, on our own. Uh, yeah, when we do have any issues, um, I can't think of any at the moment, but when we do have issues, uh, they're really fast to respond uh, and fix things. Uh, and normally, if I if I do notice something, they've already noticed it and fixed it before I can get to them. Um, yeah, so we, as I mentioned before, so we use um, Tremolo for our concierge services. So that's for partner queries, uh, changes to partner profiles. So all of our sales teams within regions have access to this concierge and they just email the partner help desk um, for any changes they need on their account, uh, any edits. Um, Obviously, we use a translation agency to translate the portal content, but some of it, uh, there's a few bits that get lost in translation, so they do translation edits um, when regions notice anything, uh, and yeah, they're always there to help our sales team, uh, who probably would know what to do if they read the portal guide, but they don't always do that. And then uh, we also pay for marketing services, so if we want new pages created, banners, um, and anything for print, uh, for uh, if I get kind of a advertising space on a catalogue, uh, then I have to have it something in by uh, in two hours. I will go to them, uh, and they're always uh, pretty good at knocking things up. So we have kind of a marketing pot for emergencies and things like that uh, to create promos when uh, when the sales managers to decide to launch a promo on the first of December and they want it live on the second. Then we use the marketing services of Tremolo for that as well. So the future, so as I said, we're rolling uh, out our partner program in Benelux and Nordics and once we've kind of got everybody on board, um, well we've actually got uh, another few countries lined up and we will be bringing Russia and Italy into our, uh, sorry, Russia and Turkey into our partner program. Um, at some point in the next year, but once we're kind of all live on the same uh, program and uh, all working together, then we can get into the exciting bits and the portal incentives to drive that engagement to get people coming back um, and really focus on that and uh, getting new partners in. So we have lots of new ideas, um, some of them which uh, Tremolo uh, aren't aware of yet. Uh, I don't like to uh, give them too many new ideas and get too carried away on our weekly calls. Uh, our account manager sometimes gets a bit um, overwhelmed with some of my requests and sometimes he, do, he does just have to say no to me, I do get a bit carried away. Um, but yeah, I, for example, I wanted some snow on the portal and then they went away and they built me some snow on the portal. Um, so they really can do uh, anything. Uh, and as well, 
as well as the design stuff and the ideas that we have, uh, obviously the back end systems and the integrations and the things that I don't <coughs> understand, they somehow manage to make it work, uh, which is great. And yeah, we'll be adding more countries and more languages, uh, which is always a, a challenge. Uh, having when you create a new page, it's not just one new page; it's nine new pages in different languages, uh, and you've got to remember to update those pages. So yeah, always challenging. Uh, we're going to be adding social on demand uh, to our uh, portfolio uh, of um, offerings for our partners as well to use and we'll be using it uh, internally for ourselves in our different regions and our different uh, different social media channels uh, in-house as well. Um, and yeah, the, the list could go on and on and on. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with where the portal is today. It's been, it's 10 times better than the old one and it gets better and better every day. Uh, so yeah, ultimately uh, the idea of a partner portal uh, is to win that loyalty uh, of the partners and uh, that's what it's proven really valuable in doing. Okay, that's it from me. Is there any more questions? So there are lots of questions, Claire. So I'm okay. going to give you a break again. Um, I think someone is asking, uh, do you create the pages or do you have an agency? So I'm going to answer that one. Okay. Uh, there, are, there are, I, I'll give you a break for that. Um, there are a number of people who are starting to build their own pages within a portal. Uh, but I think there's always a danger that uh, people could break, to, to break pages. So uh, this is where the marketing uh, service that we provide Claire with helps. Um, she can uh, and and all the marketing managers in the different countries can come back to us and we make sure we have a page uh, that's robust and that works. Uh, the complexity with CMS system these days is all pages need to be responsive and the site is responsive. So it's not as if you can just build it as it used to be done in the 70s and 80s. There's a bit more complexity today. But um, um, there are pages being built by your guys uh, at Zycel and um, that's an increasing trend. But typically Claire relies on, on Trimble the software to build those for, for them as part of the marketing uh, services. Um, now, Claire, for you, are you ready? There are some, some tough questions there. Oh, okay. Um, here we go. Um, and you may not have been part of the initial discussions, but did you at Zycel look at any other competitors or maybe look at Salesforce communities, which is, seems very popular, uh, before you engage with Tremolo software? Um, yeah, th this was a little bit before my time. When I came on board, we'd already selected the portal provider uh, and I just had six weeks to get it live um, before we uh, the other one was switched off. Um, but I do believe they had four different companies in the running that they were uh, talking to. Um, I, I couldn't tell you who they were, uh, to be honest, but I, I know that they did sit down and give our requirements to four different companies uh, and then uh, f for whatever reason, they uh, ended up choosing Pure Channel Apps, Tremolo. For a very good reason. Um, yes, so y you have mentioned it there, uh, but um, someone is asking, how long does, did it take to implement? Okay. Um, I, w I would say six weeks. I mean, you guys had a basic site structure uh, when I started, uh, and then I, I just met my account manager, and uh, I, to be fair, I changed a lot from that original structure because it wasn't great, uh, but we, we got live pretty quick. I mean, there wasn't the Meet the Team page, there wasn't the bells and whistles that we've got today, um, but it, it, it was done pretty quick. I, w I was impressed. when I On my first day, when I was told, you need to launch by the 1st of October. I, I was a bit dumbfounded with that date, but we did it, we did it. Yeah, we did, we did. and um, it's linked to another question as well. What was the most challenging aspect of the implementation? So let, let me answer my part in there. Uh, as always, uh, the, most, um, the, the most challenging aspect is always about, first of all, data. It's about understanding what data there is in the CRM system and what needs to be used and, uh, and potentially how we can use it in the systems. And data is always something that slows down these implementations. I think in the case of Zycel, we also um, you know, we, we started with a site that wasn't great and we had not only to build one, but we had to create new pages, more content, new designs, and there was also a, a different part and programs running that with different 11. So uh, 
there were some interesting aspects of, of that implementation. Do you, Claire, I mean, do you know what did you find the most challenging? Um, I I would say the, the, the back-end stuff, the technical stuff, the integration between our CRM and the portal uh, was the most challenging part for me because I was on these calls with these techie people. I didn't know what they were talking about uh, with all the coding bits and pieces and somehow I had to try to pull it together. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, data was definitely um, a, a big issue. Um, I think you guys were expecting things a certain way. Uh, I, I didn't know because I just started what, what we had. And then, uh, yeah, there were certainly a few days before launch where we thought, is this actually going to work, this integration? Uh, so I would say the technical detail rather than any um, any kind of site stuff or design or anything like that. Uh, it, it was making it work and, and getting the sync up and running. So uh, our CRM was the master data holder, but some bits could be edited in the portal and then sent back. Some bits couldn't, had to be tied down. It was just kind of getting that all uh, right and working. And then as soon as we got it working, then we changed our CRM. There we go. <laughs> I remember that too. Um, <laughs> no. Do you, someone's asking, do you have any recommendations about or best practices about rolling out a new portal? I mean, should someone asks, sh should they do a pilot first? What what do you what do you recommend? Now you've done you've gone through that step. What do you think people should do? Okay. Um so what I kind of did uh, was I came in and there was a, a site spec uh, laid out in front of me and it was kind of some of the bits that you would expect um, but I'd worked at three uh, managed partners in IT and a DISTI and a vendor before and all the while I'd used these portals for vendors and what I wanted was to find what I wanted easily uh, to get contact details of someone at that company uh, and, and yeah, to be able to access resources and things easily. So I kind of sat down and thought, as a partner, what do I want? How do I want it to look? How do I want it to work? And then kind of built it out from there, rather than kind of ticking the boxes of what your company wants to get across, kind of put yourself in the partner's position and saying, what's the most important thing to me? I want to make some money. What do I need? I need the price list with all the SKUs on uh, and the end user prices, and just kind of just work it through from there. And like, start with the basics. Don't try and build everything on day one. You can always add to things. We we launch something new uh, every single month. Uh, we've had things that haven't necessarily worked, so we've kind of ditched them. Uh, we have a, a microsite in a box, um, for example, um, that partners in Nordics and Benelux can download. So we've got different things in different regions that we've added as we went along. But when we started, we literally had the basics, events, resources, price list. We didn't even have the news section. We just had the basics that partners needed to start with. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I think that's a great, great tip. Uh, I'm going to give you a break as well. Someone is asking, uh, do you have different partner types using the portal? If so, what is the user experience for a partner that has more than one sort of partner type? That's the question. Now, let me answer that one for, for you, Claire, and, and then you can obviously add to, to it. Uh, in the system right now, a partner has one type, not multiple types, and that type uh, can do different things and that type, within that type, the partner could have different tiers, different levels within the partner program. Uh, but irrelevant to, to what's happening with SL or not, what's, what's important is um, whether it's a page, whether it's an asset, whether it's a, an event, whether it's a, a, a part of a page, we at Tremolo Software have that capability where we can restrict visibility of a page or data set or part of the page by anything. And if you have partners that have different partner types in your partner program, which happens, uh, or if you want to show them something very different from one to the next, then that is feasible. Um, Claire, does does that make sense? Does that? Yeah. Does that work? Yeah. So. Yeah. So we only have one type, um, so that's whether you're a VAR, distributor, e-teller, retailer or DMR, but then within those we have kind of subtypes, so um, within uh, VARs obviously they're in the partner program, so you can have ally, silver or gold, um, so 
when DISTI sign in, they don't see the My Zap on the menu at all. Uh, they see different bits and pieces. Um, they can, DISTI's, um, that's something I should have mentioned actually, uh, our distributors can raise special bids on behalf of their partners in the portal as well. So if the partner doesn't want to do it themselves, either the sales guys within Zizel or the sales guys at our distributors can do that on their behalf. Uh, so yeah, we've got, we've got a lot of variances so if I logged in with a different test account that was a DISTI, it would look different again. Cool. And I think the last questions and uh, last questions for you there, um, and I, I want you to answer it uh, yourself. Is would this portal work? You think just for a few partners? So, or in general, uh, if you had only twenty partners, do you think you would use a portal like this um, to provide just assets and campaigns, for instance? Or would you do it very differently? Um, if I had the budget that I have and only 20 partners, um, I'd do so much more. I'd, I'd drive the engagement so much more. Um, but it, it, it could be a bit overkill. I mean, if those are your 20 biggest multi-million dollar um, partners, then uh, obviously it would be worth the investment. Um, but I, yeah, I don't think... It is a lot of effort um, to go to for uh, smaller customer for um, less customers, but obviously if they are uh, your biggest customers, then then yeah, I would I would do it. Good. Okay. Thank you very much, Claire. Um, I think I'm going to give you a break for now. Just wanted to add to 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 everybody else just before we 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 conclude. Um, so you've seen here some elements uh, that that uh, Zassel is using or are using out of the the system there, um, and uh, but there are many other elements that can be plugged in and added. Uh, we ourselves are working through uh, a kind of mini learning management system. Uh, most people have learning management systems, but uh, uh, we have that requirement. Um, some through partner marketing and and co brandable campaign creation and asset management. Um, there is some partner, uh, some lead management solutions we're working on right now developing, uh, looking at uh, obviously more analytics and as Claire said, we are obviously can plug in our news on demand and social demand engine in, in the platform. So there is quite a lot of work on on the future for Zycel. There's also some some bits that they don't even know about that we're working on in the background. Um, but to also finish there, this is important, and thank you, Claire, for for putting that slide there. Um, I'd like to to invite all our uh, American uh, colleagues to join us at the channel meetup in California in February 21st. Uh, this is going to be. Uh, the part two of our channel meetup series. Uh, very exciting. Uh, we work with a number of companies, including Corporate Rewards and Birch Worldwide and Partner Marketing, and uh, deliver these kind of best practice discussions um, for channel marketers. So if you guys have any time, uh, if that works for you, just click on the channelmeetup.com and register for the next event. Uh, the recording for this session will be available and will be sent. And uh, uh, We'll, considering there's not no other questions coming through, I would like to thank you very much, Claire, for your time today. I think it was very valuable, uh, a great insight into uh, your partner portal, your partner program. So thank you very much for that. Uh, much appreciated from us. Uh, and um, uh, everybody on the call, thank you very much for your time. We hope you learned something new today, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you soon. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you from uh, myself too. And if you've got any questions that you think of, uh, if you um, get in contact with Tremolo and they can reach out to me if, if you've got any specific questions. Uh, but yeah, thanks for uh, listening. Hope you learned something. And thank you, Tremolo, for building me an amazing portal. No problem at all. And I'm delighted you have snow. Thank you very much. <laughs> me too. All right, you take care. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you.